Uh, my name is Alice Marwick. I'm a researcher. I study people's interactions with technology, specifically social media. And I came to this space because I worked in the tech industry for a long time. And I was really interested in interrogating some of the assumptions that businesses make about users and studying them from a perspective that wasn't just about marketing or sales, but really trying to understand what people do and how their interactions with technology affect their day-to-day -day lives. Young people have grown up with social media technologies. They're integrated into teenage life in a way that you know, some adults use them that way, but certainly not all of them. And the expectations for young people that they should be on social media, that they need to be on social media in order to participate in their peer group is really, really widespread. So to be a young person online today means that you have a place online that's networked that allows you to chat with all your friends and participate in public life, friends from school, camp, church, whatever. But it also means that all of those actions are recorded and that they're searchable and they're persistent. So there's a greater visibility to a lot of teenage interaction now than there would have been 20 years ago where kids still interacted in the same way, but they did it in you know, the parking lot or the, the school hall. Now there are these sort of online persistent spaces where parents and teachers and government people in law enforcement can sort of see what's going on. And I think sometimes that makes people very uncomfortable to see the sort of raw realities of young people's digital life. Social status is something that exists in virtually every community that has ever been studied since anthropologists and sociologists started studying community. In every community, you have people who are trying to improve their status and their standing in the eyes of other people. And how they do that depends on the community. So in some community, you might have intelligence as an extremely highly valued quality. So in that community, you would have people studying very hard or reading a lot of great books or philosophizing out loud. In another community, it might be athletic prowess that's really valued. So you have people working on that in order to boost their social status. In 20th century US, for the most part, wealth correlated with social status. So especially in the United States, you have a really big drive towards consumer success and capitalist success within that framework as a way to achieve the top of the heap, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, the post-war consumer economy, all that type of thing. When you get into the virtual world, what ends up becoming the status is really about attention and visibility. It's about how much attention you can command and how many people are listening to you. It's about the ability for you to broadcast your messages out to an interested audience and have those people respond back to you, to sort of become this micro-celebrity model, to be somebody who is looked up to by other people. And that doesn't necessarily correlate at all with wealth. It's not that social currency is new, it's that it's expressed differently online because it's possible for the first time ever for ordinary people to have potential audiences of millions. That has never been possible in mass culture at all. The only people who had access to those types of audiences were celebrities or politicians or people who had access to broadcast media. But now that social media allows for anybody to broadcast their message, I mean, most people, what they put online, nobody pays attention to. Like the average blog has something like six readers or two readers, and it's you know that person's best friend and their mom. Um, but for the, there's this ideal, or there's this, this potentiality of having your YouTube video get three million hits or having something that you wrote online become a viral sensation. And I think that things like the Twitter follower count where you have this metric, this quantification of attention, I think that's why they appeal so much to people because it allows them to compare themselves with their friends and really see who is able to command the most visibility online. <laughs>